Welcome to the inaugural episode. Well, I mean, there was an episode zero, but welcome to week one of the Revolution Fantasy Football Edition here in the Ruben Yanez Fantasy Football League. Oh, yeah. Again, Commissioner Zeus, Vice Commissioner, Big Daddy, a.k.a. Anthony, a.k.a. Tone, a.k.a. Ant, a.k.a. whatever you like to call him. It's Big Daddy for, wow, years. 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 Decades. Decades, actually. Decades. All right. Well, yeah, we're going to start with the week one scores. Uh, first up is Dayman with a score of 132 uh, and the Hayward Huffenpucks with a score of 101. Now, Dayman is up with one more player. However, the Huffenpucks have two players remaining, a running back and a tight end. I think it could be interesting. It's actually three. Three? She should have three. Uh, Melvin Gordon, Schuster, yep. Yeah. Smith Schuster and uh, Ingram. Three players remaining. It most definitely better be interesting. I mean, the odds are definitely in her favor. For sure. We'll see. No Antonio Gates this year, but we'll see. Yeah, no, yeah, no Antonio Gates. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> we got the uh, Molly Wap of the week. Oof. Uh, I say it because it's true. 172 to 98. Uh, I mean, everyone showed up for the uh, Oakland Oysters. Just right here in the neck. Right there. Just. just, just uh. Yeah. No, the, the, bleeding, the bleeding doesn't stop. It is not stopping this week. It's not. I mean, you got Josh Jacobs going off, Calvin Ridley going off. I mean, take a pick. Saints. Saints. The Saints said, hey, uh, welcome to the NFC South, Tom Brady. What? Yeah, pick anyone. Pick anyone they, they came and delivered. Yeah. Excellent start to week they one. sure did. All right, here we go. On a much closer game, but should be a lot interesting because a lot of players still remaining to play, Reservoir Dogs have 60 points which is less than the Flying Graysons with 79. However, the Flying Graysons are all but done with one player remaining, while the Reservoir Dogs have one, two, three players remaining, including the quarterback, RB1, the kicker. So let's see where this ends up. But Reservoir Dogs, you, you better come through because the Flying Graysons are sneaky good. <laughs> More than any other team, you just don't know. All right, the Shabooms taking on the Oakland Many Feastos. 128, 119. This one's in the books, ladies and gentlemen. All the players have been played. And that's your final, 128 to 119. Oh, already over. Yep, it's over. Uh, looks like uh, Denard Hopkins. Came through with his usual play, the 151 yards, giving him 31 points, no career touchdowns. High, by the way, career high. Yeah, career high. Career high. For the many Fistos, uh, you know, his number one pick came through for him, 27 points, 96 yards, two touchdowns for Kishner McCaffrey. Not bad. That guy's yeah. a beast. That, that guy is a beast. That guy's, that guy's outstanding. On CMC, yo. And you know what? I don't even understand how is it that uh, – you know what? I do understand. I'll take that part back. With that, that is a great nickname. Whoever came up with it, you didn't do much work because it was way easy, and it just fits. And it just—I don't know. I guess I, like, I just like it. Fits. Exactly. It, it, it fits him. It just fits. It just fits him. It just fits. All right, coming up. The Stack King Trolls have the uh, current lead with 106, 266 over the San Jose Joy Lives Matter. And the second trolls still have the running back still to go, while the San Jose still has one, two, three players remaining. While it could still be interesting, the stacking trolls better not let this slip away. Hmm. No, sir. Hmm. Unless, but definitely, definitely not least, 
We got our current champion, Cucamonga Crack Killers, taking on the newly formed, but on a hot streak right now, with their first win in their inaugural season. Going against the Merced, uh, Merced uh, Bippers. What the hell is a Bipper? I have no idea. I have no idea. What is a Bipper? You got me, dog. You got me. But I guess you can, mer, whatever a Bipper is, it can be found in Merced. That's why they're the, he's the Merced Bippers. And you must love them Bippers. Yeah. Hot streak of Uno. Yeah, hot streak of Uno. First week, first win. Must feel good. 143, 129. Although the Cucamonga Cracker Killers does have the Tennessee Titans to go. So, I mean, it's pretty much anyone's game. I mean, the Titans That's true. could. You know, when you put your defense out there, you never know. You never know. You get automatic 10 points and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. You could take 10. You could take zero. You could get 20. Negative nine, like some of us did. Some of us have take negatives. Some of us take negatives. sucks. Yeah. How you go from 10 to negative 9? I don't know. That's like a, that's like a damn near 20-point swing. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We'll be up to the next segment. Honey buns and crumb buns. All these guys. Oh. Let's start with the honey buns. I'm going to go first. My honey bun of the week is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Newly acquired by the Arizona Cardinals, 14 receptions, 151 yards, for a total of 31 points, all over the ass. Oh. Was your honey? Oh bun? yeah. Oh. Nice. Hi, honey bun. <sighs> Hate to say it, man. It's from the team I used to love. From the Las Vegas Raiders, running back Josh Jacobs with uh, 93 yards, three touchdowns, 36 points. This guy had a career day. Career day in Open front of day. absolutely nobody. Exactly. Well, I mean, in front of people that watched on TV. Wow. So, I mean, that's millions. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I understand. You know, in front of nobody, in front of an empty stadium. Maybe they got some cardboard, cardboard cutouts. I don't know. I didn't really see, but. Yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. All right. But yeah, that's that's the honey bun. Here we go. Crumb bums. Those crumb bums, man. I think, I, I think I've already sort of, you know, lightly hinted at who I'm going to choose because, you know, I feel a little hurt. Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings defense, 41 points allowed. And they did absolutely nothing else. They just they just let Aaron Rodgers score a bunch of times for a total of I think what Green Bay put up forty some odd points. So forty one points I just said forty one yeah. points allowed did nothing else for a grand total of negative nine fantasy points. The lowest score of the week because I just don't see anyone sucking harder. But Daddy, Absolutely not. who's your crumb bum this week? My crumb bum, well, I mean, can't really blame him for being a crumb bum. He's been out for a year. And then he signed a contract with the WWE, so can't hold him against it. It's the uh, tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, Buccaneers. <laughs> uh, Gronkowski. Rock. Two receptions, 11 yards, three points. That's in PPR. Yeah, that's in PPR. In PPR. But like I say, you can't really hold it against him. He's been out for a year. He's been out for a year. Sure. It's also one of the best targets ever. However, three points is three points. True. From one of the best tight ends in the league. Yeah. Though, I will say, that was a choice – that was made, just like the choice of putting players on the bench. And when it doesn't work, then you become a part of the segment all over that bench, baby. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you my mind first because 
I got running back Naheem Hines. Naheem? Naheem Hines. Now, the reason you've never heard of him before is because no one has ever said his name ever before until just right now. So much so, running back for the Colts, Marlon Mack, Marlon Mack got carted off the field. He did nothing. So here's Hines, 28 rushing yards, which is eh, 45 receiving yards, pretty all right. Two touchdowns for 26 points. And the Huffin Puffs decided that these that uh, this dude is going to ride the bench. 26 points all over that bench. Who you got? Got uh, the backup for the uh Cracker Killers. I mean, can't go wrong with Aaron Rodgers. Quarterback, 364 yards, four touchdowns, 32 points all over that bench. Could really help right now. It could have really, really helped. Really helped. Yeah. But then again, hindsight is 2020. So. That's what it is, 2020. So now we got to start paying attention to matchups. Yeah. Another thing about is almost in the book. Is that who should have seen who we drafted? Because yet again, the reason some of our guys didn't produce is because someone else did. Who's that other? Who's that? Is that motherfucker that helped absolutely nobody? Now, I gotta be honest with you. My choice today was Russell Gage, wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. They they lost. They got destroyed. They scored some points. Someone had to score it. Russell Gage, nine receptions, 114 yards for 21 fantasy points. And I got to tell you, that motherfucker helped nobody. Tone. My motherfucker that helped nobody is a tight end from the Cleveland Browns, David Najuku. Three receptions? No way. Yeah, three receptions, 50 yards, and a touchdown, 14 points. And that absolutely helped nobody. Nobody. Could help somebody, but it helped nobody. Help nobody. All right. Here we go. We're going to move on to the, uh, the Monday Night Odds because we just – we like, we like we like to just give out, you know, odds. I'm not saying you should gamble, never gamble. But I would like to tell you the theory of who's going to win. So, and this year we're actually going to keep score. We're going to keep a tally, Tone. We're going to keep a tally. We're going to see who gets the most correct between you and myself. All right, here we go. There, uh, There's a Monday night doubleheader, as is uh, per usual, uh, on the opening week. Game one. We will have the New York Giants hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers finally have Roethlisberger back, and uh, they're favored to win by five and a half points, with the over/under being at forty-seven and a half. Now, I personally, I see this game being high-scoring by one team. That team being the Steelers. Why? Because there's just so many weapons. There's so many weapons. There's so many weapons. You got a you got a healthy Roethlisberger. Uh, James Conner is outstanding. I mean, Le'Veon who? James Conner is outstanding, and it just seems to be a systematic thing with this organization that they just seem to do a lot of things well, including choosing players and getting rid of players. Antonio Brown is who I'm talking about. However, I definitely think because of this one team, I think the we're definitely going to go over 47.5 points. The Giants are going to be meh. But I think they'll be good enough to put up 17 points. It's going to be all Saquon Barkley, however. I promise it will be all Saquon Barkley. Steelers 35, Giants 17. Tone, what's your what's your preview? Uh, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying yeah, but I see it as a high-scoring game myself. I think the Steelers are going to be the ones scoring the most points. Uh see the points as being 
Yeah, maybe 40 to 17. All right, 40 17, and we're both going over. Yeah, we're going over. All right. Yeah, game, number going over. game number two, we have the, um, the Tennessee Titans at the Denver Broncos. Now, this is supposed to be a lot closer of a game. Vegas has this as the Titans being um, favored on the road by one point, with the over-under being 41. Now, here's my question before we actually continue. I'm asking your personal thoughts. Do you think Vegas is still doing the whole, like, the, you know, like home field is worth three points, and if it's one, that means it's a lot closer than you think? You know what I'm saying? But, Possibly. But, like – Except for like two to three stadiums, they're all empty. Yeah. So is it still the same? Yeah, I think it's still the same. All right. Well, because it's not more of a crowd thing. It's probably more of a mental thing because they're at home. They're real, you know, well rested, and uh, they didn't really have a preseason. So Titans are well rested, and they got Derrick Henry coming back. So. Right. All right. Well, I think for that reason, all right, here, I, I still see the Broncos. I, I see the Broncos struggling in this game. And yeah. I I say that because I can barely remember the name of the quarterback. I believe it's – is it Drew Locke? Locke? I believe it's Drew Locke. I, I believe the last name is Locke for sure, possibly Drew. But that's 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 all I have to know about that passing game. Which is not much. They got Philip Lindsay, but nothing else. So I honestly think that the uh, the Tennessee Derrick Henrys are going to put up twenty one points because Derrick Henry is going to run. All oh yeah, he's going to run all day. He's going to run all day. He's, he's going to be like, dead. oh yeah, sorry. No, I'm saying like he's going to be he's going to get taken to prom so many times because all the missed tackles, so many times. Yeah. This dude, I see three rushing touchdowns by Derrick Henry. And I just see three field goals coming from the, the Broncos. Even though this game isn't Denver, the altitude will mean absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I still so even though it's gonna be 21 to 7, I still think it's gonna be under because the over-under is 41 points. I don't believe it'll be that many points because I think most of the points will be scored by Derrick Henry by himself. Nobody else. No one's gonna help him. It's just going to be Derrick Henry running from one end to the other. It's true. Six points. It's true. Who you got in this game? You got the Titans. Not only do they have uh, Henry, but they also have that second-year wide receiver, too, Anthony Brown. Ooh, that, guy's, uh, that guy can get open. That guy can make some plays. He made some pretty good ones against the Raiders, too, last year. That's true. So uh, yeah, I see. Uh, I see it as a high-scoring game, but all the points are going against, uh, going towards the uh, Titans. I say over under forty-one. I say it's over forty-one, probably, probably thirty, thirty to ten. No, that's, that's forty. Probably forty-one to thirty. Not ten. Sorry, forty-one 10. to ten. I like it. Or oh, 30, sorry, 30 to 10. Yeah, 31 to 10, sorry. 31 to 10? I can't, I can't add, sorry, 31 to 10. It's okay. It's okay. We got it on record, so we'll know exactly right. what the deal was. 31 to 10. I don't know where that one's coming from, but it's coming. Well, mathematically, mathematically, almost any number is possible except, I guess, one, right? Yeah. Except one. Except one. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's going to conclude week one. We'll see you in week two. Aww. Yeah.